Hey everybody, my name is Cheryl Custer. Thanks so much for joining us today. I'm really excited to be presenting to you the Horton Work Sandbox. With me today, I have uh, one of our uh, ACE solution engineers, uh, Adam Diaz. And so uh, we're going to go through a little bit of an introduction first. So my, again, my name is Cheryl Custer. I am the Director of Services Marketing here at Horton Works. Um, as part of that role, I am also the executive producer of the Horton Works Sandbox, which was introduced and launched on January 22nd. Uh, a little bit about me, so I, I do believe that Red Zinfandel is a food group and nearly as important as fruits and vegetables as a food group. And I've been in the um, enterprise software and hardware world for more years than I'd actually like to admit. Um, Adam, you want to introduce yourself? Sure, yeah, this is Adam Diaz. Uh, I'm a new solution engineer, relatively new. We're a pretty young company, but um, I, I'm in the southeast region. We were kind of tongue-in-cheek uh, with these little comedy uh, uh, introductions there. We said we wanted to put something in a little, with a little bit more personality. But I've been doing um, distributed computing for a number of years now, and uh, Hortonworks is uh, my newest venture, and, and uh, we're all looking forward to introducing the sandbox to you. Great. Thanks, Adam. So for today, what we will uh, walk through today is an introduction to the Sandbox. We'll talk a little bit about how you get started with the Sandbox. Um, the most exciting part, which uh, my buddy Adam will go through, are the demos. And he'll show you the hands-on tutorials. He'll do a little bit of off-roading. And he'll talk a bit about how you can add your own data sets. And then we will close with some Q&A. So with that, let's uh, do the introduction to the Hortonworks Sandbox. So first off, the Hortonworks Sandbox is a single node implementation of our enterprise-ready Hortonworks data platform. It is based off the Hortonworks data platform version 1.2, and it is a functional Hadoop environment for you to use. Within the context of the Sandbox, we will provide demos, videos, and step-by-step hands-on tutorials. This is a free downloadable virtual machine that you can use. It runs on a VMware image or a virtual box image. And this download will be, is free today and will continue to be free. And what we've done is to uh, release a sandbox to help really dramatically accelerate the process of learning Apache Hadoop. One of the things that we saw uh, and we've heard repeatedly is that these big data skills are um, in high demand, but then the challenge of actually having an evaluation or a demo environment that you can get your hands on that's easy to use is really difficult. And then once you do get an environment, then what do you do? How do you actually learn how to use Apache Hadoop? And so the Sandbox has been designed to really help go through and help you get some basics of Apache Hadoop going through the see it, learn it, and do it methodology. And so in addition to not only, help, not only helping you learn how to use Hadoop, it also helps accelerate and validate the use of Hadoop within your unique data architecture. So you're able to add your own data sets and work through use cases within your own environment to ensure that you'll be ready to implement a proof of concept or go straight into your development and test environments. We really believe that this is the fastest and easiest on-ramp to Apache Hadoop, and it's going to provide you the opportunity to go from zero to big data in 15 minutes. So let's talk a little bit about the Sandbox features. So first, it is your own personal Hadoop environment. Once you download the virtual machine on your laptop, no internet connection is required. You're able to put your own data sets in there if you choose to, and therefore you have a secure environment where you have control of the data and it's not residing in a cloud somewhere where you don't have any control. And since no connection is needed, if you're sitting on a train from Boston to New York and you want to learn a few new skills on Hadoop, you can boot up the sandbox and learn how to code and run through various tutorials all within the privacy of your own laptop. Included into the sandbox are hands-on step-by-step tutorials. So we've gone to great pains to work with our training team that has trained thousands of users on developing and administering Hadoop, and we've worked with that team to develop the tutorials that are in the sandbox. 
So if you're new to Hadoop, this is a great place to start. We provide you the context of what is the particular project or what is the use case. And then we walk you through hands-on, step-by-step tutorials and step-by-step -step lessons. And so if you're not familiar with um, programming in Pig Latin or you're not real familiar with creating SQL queries um, that would be uh, analogous to a Hive query, we'll walk you through those and no experience is necessary to actually walk through and be successful with the tutorials. We will be providing regular content updates with the push of a button. Uh, super easy update, we'll talk about that in a minute. And within the context of that, we'll be providing new and additional use cases. So as we continue to provide new content updates, we will be bringing in partner tutorials and partner demos to show the integration of Hadoop with our various ecosystem partners. And finally, this is based on the Hortonworks data platform. This is the only 100% open source distribution of Apache Hadoop. And we will be uh, releasing new versions of the sandbox with every new release of the Hortonworks data platform. So let's talk about this see it, learn it, and do it methodology. So for us to provide you the fastest on-ramp to an enterprise Apache Hadoop, we will go through a three-step process with you. So the first step is the see it process and the see it methodology. We deliver demos and videos where you can watch end-to-end -end use cases, whether it be with our own use cases or the partner integrations. Then within the context of the sandbox, you'll go through a learn it methodology. So there, within the tutorial, we'll explain to you the differences between um, the various projects, we'll explain to you the context of the lesson, and then we'll take you through the do it methodology. So this is where you'll do the hands-on, step-by-step tutorial and allow you to actually get your hands dirty, roll up your sleeves, and work with the Apache Hadoop environment. So let's talk about what it takes to get started with the Sandbox. So the first thing is you'll want to download the Sandbox if you haven't already. System requirements are that it runs on Mac and Windows, although we have heard from our uh, users uh, that it does work on Linux as well. We do uh, suggest that you have a minimum of four gigabytes of RAM and that you are able to run VirtualBox or VMware Fusion or VMware Player to run the VMware image. The download size is about two gigs, so if you're on a slow wireless connection, you may want to keep that in mind. Um, but you'll be able to find this free download from the Hortonworks main webpage under Products and the Hortonworks Sandbox. You will be asked to do a real short registration to get access to the sandbox, and then it's just a simple download and a simple installation process. Once you're in the sandbox, you'll see hands-on tutorials and a sandbox environment. So the sandbox is divided into two different sections. On the left-hand side are the tutorials. So this is where we'll be providing you this updated content on a regular basis. And Adam will be going through and doing the demo for you and showing all the neat features within the tutorials themselves. On the right-hand side is an HTTP environment that's available for your evaluation. And note that we do have a, an interface base, or interface on top of this, uh, on top of HIT, PIG, and Hive, sorry about that. And if you want to go off-roading and you want to log into root, that, uh, that option is available to you as well. So if you're familiar with the command line interface and that's the interface you want to use, you can get to that as well. The uh, hands-on tutorials are um, given in within the context of the tutorial environment on the left-hand side. And so what we do is we go through, we all show you a screenshot of what you should see as a result of the lesson and we'll give you the individual scripts and the individual commands that you'll need to put uh, into the sandbox environment to walk through the tutorials themselves. Contained within the sandbox are um, links to external data sets. And so we do have external data sets that are available for you. There is a data set that is the New York Stock Exchange data, and then there are some, uh, there's a data set around various baseball stats. So these data sets are uh, uh, available, publicly available. You can download them and import them into the sandbox and use them within the context of the uh, tutorials. 
If you decide that you want to do your own data sets, same process, you just add the, the uh, data sets into the sandbox and you can run through any of the um, uh, PID commands, Hive commands, HBase, anything that is within the Hortonworks data platform you'll find within the sandbox. So when it comes time to update the content, it's a very simple one-step process. And so we don't require you to download the whole virtual machine every time we update the content. It's a very simple update process. Once you uh, know that there are new tutorials available, and we'll make those announcements, by the way, about new tutorials either through our website or on Twitter um, or through various email blasts. So I highly recommend that you sign up for the Hortonworks newsletter because we will be announcing the new tutorials through the newsletter as well. When it comes time for the update, go into the sandbox and click the button with the uh, sandbox logo, the white sandbox logo in the upper left hand corner of the sandbox environment and you'll be brought to the screen which is the About Hortonworks sandbox. Within that screen, you'll see a number of different things, so one of which is you'll see the tutorials and the version and the update button. When it comes time to update and provide new tutorials, simply press the update button and new tutorials will flow into the left-hand side. So you don't have to re-download the virtual machine, you don't have to go through any of the configuration. The new content will simply flow into the sandbox environment. Note on that screen you'll also see the different versions of the various projects that are included within the Hortonworks data platform environment. So for example, you'll see that it's uh, PIG 0.10.1.21 is the particular version of the project that we've included in the sandbox environment. You'll also see in the about Hortonworks data, or the Hortonworks sandbox, you'll see the leave feedback button. So I highly encourage you to take the surveys that are throughout the sandbox and provide us your input and feedback as to what you find is useful and what you would like to see improved upon. We definitely are listening to and taking your feedback. Um, one of the pieces of feedback that we have gotten since the release of the sandbox is that you'd like more tutorials. And so we are accelerating the uh, release and the process of getting new tutorials into your hands. So look for those updates shortly. All right, so on to the good stuff. Adam, I'm going to let you take it away and uh, have you uh, do some demos for our audience here. Okay, let me welcome. Today we'll be showing you the Hortonworks Sandbox environment, uh, which we just released uh, based upon uh, HDP 1.2. And what you need to do uh, to obtain this is to go to hortonworks.com and look in our product section you'll find a section there on the Hortonworks Sandbox. Uh, you're able to download um, the Sandbox. It's a single virtual image uh, available in a, in a few different formats, but it's a single virtual image instance of what normally is a much larger installation of uh, Apache Hadoop, and specifically Hortonworks Data Platform, across multiple nodes. And so this is a one node instance that is excellent to allow you to um, basically turn it on, involve yourself in learning not only Hadoop uh, but prototyping uh, or even doing um, some development work um, depending upon how you access um, the sandbox itself. And so today what we're going to show you is three basic interfaces for this sandbox. One other thing I wanted to point out before I moved on is once you download this I want to encourage you to go to the Hortonworks forums. We specifically have a section in here called Hortonworks Sandbox and you can go in here and ask um, questions. You know some some different users um, definitely have had questions about can I uh, provide more memory to the sandbox or have questions about the networking and how to when I install a virtual machine, what type of network uh, adapter should I provide? How do I get the image in? It does come with full instructions, but oftentimes folks have questions, and this is a great place to go. Uh, folks from Hortonworks and, and users around the world now are um, involved in this community and, and are, are fairly quick to lend a hand if you have issues or general questions as well. 
So when you get the sandbox installed and running, you essentially get yourself some virtualization system, a VMware, a virtual box, what have you. You import this uh, uh, virtual machine into that system, turn it on, make sure it has two network adapters. Uh, uh, it's nice to have one of those adapters be bridged or natted, what have you, to get out to the real world because as you'll see in a few minutes we have a syndication system which allows us to pass you tutorials. So it comes with a series of tutorials. It can run fully on its own uh, in and of itself if that's the way you choose to run it. If you want to put it on your laptop, take it on the train with you, that's a fully valid use case completely disconnected from the internet uh, to interact with and use uh, Hadoop right on your personal system in a, in a one instance um, way. And so when you do that, you boot up, it gives you a uh, gives you an IP number or, or a name uh, that you can use then in your web browser, which is what I've done here. Opened uh, my web browser to the landing page of the sandbox. So this is the web interface version of how you can interact with the sandbox. If you just wanted to use the sandbox directly, you don't really want to mess with the tutorials, you don't need help watching videos, you can go ahead and do that on the far right, the use the sandbox link. And go ahead and click on that and, and be off and running uh, in, a, in a graphical interface which we'll show in just a minute. Um, if you'd like a little bit more help you can use the center option run tutorials go ahead and click on this it opens up in a frames view which we'll show in just a second opens up in a frames view and you're able to have tutorials along the left and uh, a, a user interface panel on the right and then if you just want to learn a little bit more you know we've used this section to sort of place um, you know, links to different videos and and other materials to help you watch in terms of you know video information about Hortonworks, about the sandbox, about what we do, and so that again is one of those areas like the tutorials that will grow over time, grow and change over time. So we'll go ahead and say run tutorials, uh, and as you can see here, uh, I have a window uh, off to the right, and I have a variety of icons with different components, parts of Hadoop, the Hadoop system um, that I can go ahead and click on and use right now. You can see I was previously in here and I, I had the I was in the pig section. So we'll talk a little bit more about what, what that's all about in a minute. Um, but again, uh, what you have on the left is sort of the introductory material, links, a link to the sandbox forums again. Uh, a fee feedback survey definitely if you if you like it if you don't especially if you don't like it uh, please tell us I mean, we're always looking to improve we've, we've received tons and tons of of feedbacks uh, on, on this of, of all shapes and sizes so we're, we're interested to hear uh, what you have to say and how we how we could make this better and more useful um, to you and so then there's these the tutorials a variety of different tutorials sections here and so there's three um, that we started with were obviously um, just like any other uh, project that we would undertake, this is you know cut one, version one. So we're going to add tutorials as we go, uh, and then we'll syndicate those to you. And the way that happens is uh, through this link here uh, in the about section, you have the ability to go ahead and say uh, go ahead and update, uh, and it'll it'll bring down the new tutorials and make those available to you on, on the left hand frame. And so some of the things that you could do uh, with the uh, sandbox uh, include um, accessing files. If you just want to bring data in to HDFS, that's usually the first step with, a, with Hadoop. Uh, say you want to run some pig scripts. Say you want to define a file you've imported in HCatalog um, and then run some analytics against that. Um, do some ETL. Uh, this is a great place to learn how to do that. So one of the one of the things we can do is just show you how to do this real quickly. Um, and so in terms of files, this is a file browser for HDFS. What I'm actually going to do is this is from previous demos, just to show you how to use this. I'll actually remove I'll actually remove these um, files that I have here. I'll say delete, and then. Uh, what we can do, uh, on the other hand, is go back into HCatalog. Uh, one thing that you might want to do is access HCatalog. This is a project um, that several of the, the folks at Hortonworks who are uh, part of the core uh, Apache Hadoop team have developed um, to allow a metadata layer 
uh, for data that's contained in HDFS. So one of the problems that you'll have if you start using lots of tools like MapReduce and Pig and what have you is uh, you would have you know whole paths or or whole names of of files and locations in HDFS. And really, you don't want that. You want an abstraction layer. You want a metadata layer that says I can just call uh, whatever I'm working on by name uh, and go ahead and use that consistent name across the various ways that I'm interacting with with Hadoop. And so uh, what we're actually going to do is recreate uh, this table. Should just take a second. So actually what I'm going to do is drop this table and I'll circle back and recreate it for us. So if you wanted to, you could interact with the system uh, directly from the file browser, which is what I orig originally showed you. Um, you can also just directly go into this HCAT um, icon and uh, say create a new table from a file. We can select a name. and So you see there's a three-step process. Choose a file, choose a delimiter, uh, and define the columns. That'll go ahead and in this case this little wizard is going to guide you through that process. <clears throat> it's going to say, you know, pick your file, pick your delimiter, help me understand the schema. It's going to place that in HDFS and it's also going to define that in HCAP for you. So then you're from that point on off to the races in terms of say going right into PIG. Uh, it's taking care of a multi-step process for you. And so we'll go ahead and say um, grab this file. We're going to upload a file from my desktop and then we'll use this file so in the, in the second step what it does for us is it says okay go ahead and choose a delimiter so it, by default is already uh, using tab and we have uh, use the first row as a table header so we have that here it's given us a little table preview and we'll go ahead and say next because everything looks great. So in the next step we're going to have to go ahead and define the column name. So we have string, string, we can leave the date as a string, uh, that'll be fine. And then we'll go ahead here to these numerical columns. We'll make these float. This one will make big int, make this float, we'll say create table. And so this little workflow is one that uh, I'm just walking through. It's actually part of tutorial one. If you go through that in detail, you'll see most of this, uh, most of these steps as a part of tutorial one. So there's our uh, H catalog table, New York uh, Stock Exchange stock data, imported, defined in H catalog, ready for us to use. Okay. So what we can do now is we can go right right on over to Pig and access a script. Again, this script is talked about in the tutorial. It talks about it in a little bit more um, detail in there. How to go ahead and input all of this information. Um, as you're building things you can use the pig helper to help you um, place different uh, syntax correctly into your scripts if you don't already have it written. If you wanted to you could just create a new script and paste it in from somewhere else. It's very easy to do. If you're creating scripts uh, in here uh, by hand you can go ahead and use this pig helper section. It's very handy. Lots of different um, common uh, functionality that you're going to need to do uh, in a pig script. So this is a, a fairly simple script. Uh, we like it tutorial wise and, and especially demo wise because it fits on one screen but uh, essentially what we're doing here is we're saying hey um, get this data so we're loading New York stocks into uh, our environment using this script and go ahead and get that from H catalog and then we're gonna go ahead and filter to get, get us down to just the stocks that have uh, IBM in them. And we're going to iterate over one of the columns in that data to talk about, uh, to average the uh, closing price. 
So there's a variety of columns in there. I believe there was an opening price, a closing price, a stock volume. You could you could basically replace any of those uh, columns in here, and what what it's going to do in the end is dump out a, a single value. It's going to give you that average value at the end. And if we wanted to, we could do things like email notifications. We can add user-defined functions. This is a really key, very important area of Pig. If you're not familiar with, you should uh, investigate this because this is really how you kind of take Pig from it does what it does now uh, to it does exactly in a very specific case what you needed to do, uh, just like the name suggests, a user-defined function. And so we'll say execute, and that job will run. So there's also the explain syntax, uh, ex yeah, explain button and the uh, syntax check. So the explain button, again, is uh, going to give you some information on what does that job look like in terms of how it's being translated into MapReduce. And then the syntax check is just like it sounds. It's a, it's a syntax checker. So this will take just a second to run. And once it completes, we'll actually see the result uh, come up below the blue uh, progress bar. And as you work, oh, there it goes. And as you work, uh, you'll work in on different scripts. You'll have the different scripts listed under my script, obviously. But you may not have noticed as I'm moving around uh, from these sort of major icons, there's also minor uh, submenu tabs in here. We'll click on query history in a second once this finishes. Uh, but it, again, just like the name suggests, it'll show you um, the history of previous jobs that we had run. Um, if you want to, there we go. So it came back with the, the single number of 109 based upon the closing price. So uh, if you want to, you can go ahead and dig into the logs. Um, it has all this sort of output that you'd expect, either in the log, log of a job or in the uh, you know standard output. Um, so this is some information that you'll you're if you're used to running MapReduce jobs, you're used to seeing some output output like this and so that's great I can come in here I want to use pig I want to use hive this is beeswax the hive same type of idea as the pig interface uh, you're getting an ability to have an interactive query editor and executor uh, and then some uh, access to different settings and again in these sub tabs um, as you run different different jobs if you want to work with delete add uh, remove files again you can go back to the file browser um, as you're working on different jobs whether they're submitted through this interface or not you can come here and, and check on those jobs and uh, you have the ability to then drill through some of these jobs by job ID uh, as well and so what we're going to talk about next um, that that's the that's the basic dime tour of the web interface but that's not all you can do with the sandbox um, the sandbox is accessible just like any other uh, full install, full clustered install of uh, Apache Hadoop, but it's just in one box. So what else could you do with it? Well, uh, it just so happens that we have some other interfaces uh, that are a part of uh, HDP, uh, specifically this one, the Talent Open Studio for Big Data, which you can obtain uh, also from our website in the download section. Um, and what this does is this is uh, an ETL tool. This allows you to access uh, and define a process around uh, manipulating information and then getting that into and out of uh, various locations. One of those locations being Apache Hadoop. Perhaps you have data in a database. Um, if this looks familiar to you, and it, and it might or might not, but if you're familiar with Eclipse, if you're familiar with Java, uh, this this looks a whole whole lot like the Eclipse interface. Uh, that's what it's based upon, obviously. Uh, and what you can do here uh, is a variety of things. So there's lots of windows here, so I'm going to try to slow down for a second and talk to what where what's the lay of the land here. So um, in the upper left-hand corner, we have this repository tab, and then there's a variety of sets of information, uh, very important information regarding what you're doing in the rest of the screen. Uh, contained in the repository uh, section. So job designs, so what I have open right now is a job design called test job. What's inside of an actual job, there are these things called components. So there's two components to this job named test job. 
these components came from the far right way over here in this thing called the palette so as you open this there's various individual components you can go through the menu system you can also do a search for different components and it'll go ahead and uh, filter those for you but as you can see if you click around um, there's just a, a real wide assortment of choices here for how am I going to create workflows um, and processes to process data and so what we have defined in the test job section uh, are two components and you can see they're sort of highlighted with this box uh, and that that itself um, you know is the totality of this job um, and so just a few other points about the repository view before we move on so this is a very simple obviously very simple job it's simple on purpose uh, for the demo purposes uh, but one key uh, thing about each one of these components is each one has a whole breadth and uh, depth of settings inside of it and a very important thing for you to set up to be able to connect to the sandbox is what's called a context so when you open the repository view you can create yourself a Hadoop context and essentially what these are is they're very similar uh, if you're familiar with uh, programming and shell scripting they're very similar to just environmental variables and so you can use these in the various dialogue um, settings within a component to basically tell it hey uh, in a consistent way across all the components if you just keep using uh, these individual variables so in your script code you'd say context.hbase host if it were needed uh, you can go ahead and set all of those here and so then globally as we go across looking at uh, for example uh, the settings for this first component Apache log uh, input you have uh, context local data so I have a just one big data directory on defined in my context and I just give it this um, context and then say okay the file I want within that directory is access log and so then I uh, control click or right click uh, depending upon what you're using and then you can you have various options to then connect components together into workflows and we'll show another one another uh, long a little bit larger workflow after this but the whole idea here is that all I had to do was go over here find the Apache log uh, component drag it into this workspace and this already has defined within it the schema for an Apache log so various log files I want to grab those I can have a component has the schema sort of set up in here exactly how I want it whether it's this or something custom you have um, go ahead and do that and then you have the component uh, in your palette and quickly drag it over here assign a assign a uh, file name to it you could even go ahead and drag something directly off of the file system using the icon on the right um, connect it up to where you want it to go in this case um, HDFS uh, there's a few settings in here you have to know you know where you're putting it you have to know how to, how to say okay HDFS is here it's at this port uh, and then we say okay what's the name of the file that we'd like for it to be in there and basically um, go ahead and say go uh, so for this job that we're looking at in the center panel here all these tabs down here are specific to that job one very important uh, tab is this context tab and I uh, talk to lots of users both inside Hortonworks and and customers uh, when they like to use this tool and are investigating using this tool and they kind of always forget about this tab so this is a very important tab make sure that if something's not working and you're using those contexts in your components come in here and look at this context tab and look at values as a table it'll tell you what this job knows as the current context sometimes that doesn't always match what you think it is so make you can come in here and double check and that will save you um, lots of heartache and trying to find uh, you know chase down things you thought were going to work uh, you need to make sure that this context is set up correctly uh, so in short uh, what we can do then is go ahead and say and it also shows you uh, along the right hand pane over here what the 
context values are. Uh, what we'll go ahead and do is say run and it'll go ahead and grab that log file and it'll go ahead you can disregard this message here this is a Java a Java error message but it's not uh, this isn't critical uh, if you have 1.7 it should uh, you shouldn't see that uh, but anyway it says here the job test ended uh, exit code 0 so that's good news and what we can actually do then is go back to our browser and look at the file browser under user sandbox and you can see now that here's that access log that we just imported with all the data that we just imported. So again, um, the Talent is a really great tool for interacting with the sandbox and defining workflows. So, so what big deal uh, you say I'm not impressed. Well, this is more than it looks like because what you're doing here is you're graphically creating code. Uh, you probably didn't notice this one little tab down here called the code tab. Um, and th this is actually uh, relative to the context we had it in. So we, I had double clicked the HDFS output um, component in the previous view, the designer view, and now we're in the code view and it actually is highlighting the, the section of code that it's actually writing for us behind the scenes. You didn't know that this was happening, but here it is writing this code for you, and you can use this code. You can use this code in a variety of ways. You can take this code out of here and go ahead and launch this as a job. If you want to play with this via the command line, edit this code by hand, feel free. Here it is. You're ready to go. You wrote a whole bunch of uh, Java code, and you wrote basically uh, a job to put data into Hadoop and didn't even know it. And so what you can do then is if you want to use that you can export that code, cut and paste that code. Another nice thing you could do is you could use the Uzi uh, scheduler to go ahead and schedule recurring jobs at some frequency if that's what you wanted to do from right here in the interface. Another thing that uh, may or may not uh, have occurred to you is that because of the fact that we're using the context if we change our context, we can change where this job goes. Meaning, I could have an additional context here for a production cluster or a QA cluster or a development cluster, which is more than the single node VM that the sandbox is, and quickly refactor this exact code to be launched to a production or a QA or a full-blown cluster implementation of Hadoop. So again, using the sandbox, on your local drive and then engaging it with talent, engaging it with um, other tools and then redistributing that um, to a production system. So one other thing we can do here is we can I've already logged into the sandbox here so I'll go ahead and say clear and I'll log into this little directory where I've placed um, a little script. I'll go ahead and cat that for you. So this is a little clustering. K-means as a little clustering um, script. And again, I won't try to go into the details of what is all this, but this again is is a is a Python version of running uh, pig. And what you can do here is we'll go ahead and run this and show you what it looks like to run a job from the command line. and what type of output you're going to get and how you can again go back to the uh, web interface in the file browser and in the job browser uh, and see these things running. So if you're used to running pig, you're used to running MapReduce, again this is a very similar type of output. Okay, we can down here we can see MapReduce 0% complete. Uh, we see this little we can go ahead and jump right back over here if we wanted to and find out information on the job okay so we have as, as this goes uh, over time we can refresh it and we'll get additional different information we can check out the map portion and then if we wanted to go back into the sandbox we could look at the job browser we could see our job running here if we wanted to kill it we could 
if we had lots and lots and lots of jobs running we could go ahead and filter based upon these columns but in this case we're gonna um, go back and drill into that specific job here it is and so there's different phases of this job job cleanup job setup map and reduce and so if we drill into that we can get more information on that and keep drilling in and so there's a variety of information here available to you uh, very similar to the information that's available to you via the command line or via uh, you know knowing uh, where your your job tracker uh, URL and port and and job number are but again you know we've kind of bubbled that up into something and more consumable here for you so you can drill through it and it's a little bit more user friendly so if we go back we can go right back over to our command line and what it's doing is it's running this actually more than once and so eventually it will complete but in short um, that is what I wanted to show you today I'll go back to the sandbox here and just say that you know there's a variety of ways to interact with this there are other tools that you can interface with this um, often get the question I have tool X I know your partner with many many uh, organizations you use tableau you use what have you um, and I want to attach that to the sandbox and use that for my own ETL purposes for development for training what have you um, you connect the short answer is you connect all of those tools to the sandbox the same way you connect those tools to any normal Hadoop system. Somewhere in each one of those tools specifically there's a section in the Talon version. Again we do that in terms of a context. Uh, so for Talon it's setting the context you know what are these various variables we need to know where the name node is, we need to know where HBase and HDFS, we need to know a username. You just have to go through and set those all specific to the sandbox. And what I actually do is I let the I have my first um, network adapter I actually put it on a static IP I set the I set that IP uh, in my Etsy host on my this is a Mac so I set it in my Etsy host on my Mac uh, and then I can reference that by name both through Talon and both through my web browser and it consistently will always go to the same place so I don't have to mess with IP numbers and dynamic uh, IP assignment if you use DHCP so you know you rest to use a static IP define it for yourself um, in your local host file uh, you may even want to go down the route of uh, exchanging SSH keys so you can SSH over there uh, with no password uh, via SSH again uh, if you want to log in to the um, command line uh, you can do so as a user root using the password Hadoop uh, and then if you need to be any other user you can uh, SU to those other users as you need to and so we we'll just want to say thank you for coming please go download the sandbox give it a try I think you'll find uh, that it's very useful we're finding more uses for it every day uh, we have more goodness to come so please check back with us often